Hey guys, Danny Johnson here and today I'm pretty much freaking out because I just found out that one of my old Mustangs is going to a salvage yard. And so I'm, I'm real stressed out about it. I never wanted to sell that car in the first place. And uh, after a long series of events, um, anyway, I figured it out. I actually had some friends send me pictures of it. It's weird how it all happened, but I know about it. And uh, so now I'm seeing what I can do about it. Uh, so just to give you a backstory of the car, um, this was about 10 years ago. This is 2007 at the very end, about November is when I got it. And the story goes back a little farther than that, of course. I had a V6 Mustang in high school, as did my twin brother. And I'll show you some pictures of those. But uh, anyway, we always wanted a V8, of course. And so uh, we loved the Mach 1s and the Terminators. But back in 2007, 2008, Mach 1s were still going for 18,000. Terminators were still going into the 30s. And so, um, you know, we were looking at car dealerships, you know, whatever we could find around town. And I had just gotten married that same year. So money was tight. We sold my wife's uh, Honda Civic. It even got broken into where we live, so I wasn't even sure if I wanted a nice car here. As I found this white GT, and uh, it's a 2001 Mustang GT 5-speed, uh, brown interior. And uh, so it was kind of a run-of-the-mill car. It had the regular 17-inch wheels, but still 17-inch wheels were better than what had come factory on my V6, which were 15s. And, uh, you know, it was the two-valve V8, but that was better than my 3.8-liter V6. And so in every way, this car was, you know, everything that I was, I was really excited about. Oxford white was actually a very nice color. I always thought of it as a fleet vehicle color, but I really liked looking at the huge hood scoop coming over the hood after having just a V6 Mustang, hearing the grunt, and you know the lines of the car actually came out really well with white. Um, it didn't polish very well, but I mean that hood scoop in every angle looked good, the wheels looked good, even though they were the factory ones that uh, some people don't care for. I really liked it, and uh, the stock exhaust sounded good. All around, it was a pleasant car. I really liked the way it looked. It was bright, it was clean, it was cool. The spoiler even felt like it was a thick painted uh, color. Just the, It's almost like the paint was thicker on this. And uh, the problem came when my uh, wife, and I don't know if it was so much pressure from her family or how it looked to her family or whatnot, but we were driving around the V6 Mustang and then this new 01 GT and so um, she was kind of struggling with having two Mustangs instead of a family car and, and that kind of thing. And so obviously out of the two, we couldn't go and get another car payment. Uh, so um, we ended up selling the uh, white Mustang GT in order to go get a white G35. And it was a really nice car. We took it on some road trips. We did the ET Highway. We went to Lake Tahoe, put a nice navigation in it when the audio finisher board failed, but it turned into a really nice car. We really did enjoy it. Leather seats, sunroof, you know, heated seats, all that kind of thing. My wife really enjoyed it, and she deserved it. I wanted to make sure I was taking care of her. But then again, you know, we were racking up miles on a family car, and I didn't quite have a family in it. That's another story. And here we moved into our town home, which would later help me find the car again, the GT that is. And I really did not want to let that car go. In the short time that I had it, I had put a lot of work into it, from a leaking power steering uh, hose. To the intake manifold gasket, which Ford had in, had. Uh, improperly repaired they took uh, you may be familiar with the two valve intake manifolds the newer ones have a seal around each of the intake ports and the water ports and uh, so Ford had taken off the old intake manifold and put the new one on with the new seals but also left the strip seal on the bottom and so 
slapped it back together and and one day i was revving it up in the parking lot and it shot antifreeze right at my chest and so i was just uh trying to figure this all out and you know i was 22 or you know somewhere around there at the time i had very little experience pretty much just oil changes and spark plugs is as much as work that i had done and so uh you know we tore the whole car down put it back together and it leaked antifreeze again and uh, tore it down apart again. My dad showed me that it must be the uh, ceiling on the back of the intake manifold, which I didn't even think to look at. I mean, it really was a nightmare because I had to drive this car to work the very next day or over the weekend, so I didn't have a lot of time to work on it. My brother really helped me out a lot, and uh, you can imagine it was hard to tear it all apart just to have it leak again and try to figure this out. And, you know, I had coil pack issues. I had all kinds of problems with this car, but it was my car, and it was my first V8, and so I was determined to fix it and enjoy it. So, you know, eventually we got it all running, but it was one thing after another. So, anyway, went through all that, uh, air conditioning, discharge hose, all these things, got the AC running perfect. And so uh, then my wife decided, you know, like, enough was enough, and, and uh, we needed to sell it. So, like a <laughs> three-year-old... It was like prying a wet Jolly Rancher from a three-year-old's fist. I did not want to give this car up, but I did in order to prove that the relationship was important and uh, and that kind of thing. And I didn't want to be selfish, um, but at any rate, I, I did feel like I kind of got rid of a car that I wasn't really ready to get rid of. So uh, from there, we sold it to our neighbor, and so I got to watch him drive it around, and uh, that was very hard for me. He was tinting the windows and talking about all the modifications he was going to do to it, the exhaust and intake and all that, all the things I wanted to do. And so um, eventually the time came and uh, we, we moved because we were just in a one-bedroom apartment, as you'll see in the pictures. And so here it is parked at the one-bedroom apartments that we were at. And, and this was fun. We put the Cobra R's off of my brother's V6 on here and had a little fun. But uh, yeah, it was living outside car in the background and uh, so we moved away and uh, and I remember when we did when we were selling it to him the day of my wife called and she felt really bad and said you know what you know do we really want to sell this and I said no we don't and and if you tell if you give me even just a little bit of leverage I'm gonna take this car straight over to the exhaust shop and put exhaust on it and we're gonna keep going with it so maybe that was uh, more <laughs> what pushed her over the edge so anyway so we sold it to this neighbor then we finally moved away and i told him of course if you ever sell this or you plan on selling it let me know and uh so i met him a few years later and said hey you know how's the mustang and he said oh yeah i sold it sold it a while ago and so i was kind of like oh i thought you were gonna at least let me know and so i went um around town as usual just driving around and all of a sudden I started seeing it some lady had it and she was driving it here and she was driving it there and I was I was there's my old car and I'd looked at, I'd see it park and we'd take pictures of it and uh, then one day all of a sudden we saw it uh, for sale near our home uh, up on a hill and so we went over and I looked in the window Sure enough, it had my GT coin delete that I had put in it. I looked down at the fog lights that I had got because um, when I got it, I got it for uh, like 8,500. It was, uh, you know, run down. It didn't have fog lights in the front and was leaking all that. So after all the work, one of those things was the fog lights. And so I'm looking down at these fog lights and one of them's broken. And I'm like, that's my fog light that I... Here I am on Christmas opening up the fog lights that I finally got. And uh, So anyway, um, we're looking the car over. It's really not too bad condition. I did notice that they put some 05 to 09 bullet wheels on it. Um, I sold it with the stock wheels. We took the bullets off it when we had it. And it's for sale. The guy comes out and uh, I said, oh, I thought a lady owned this. And he said, yeah. Um, well, there's a lady who's getting behind on payments, and it was not really running right, so I basically bought it from her for what she owed on it. And I said, oh, okay, well, uh, how much is it for sale now? And he said, uh, I'll give it to you for 4100 And so that was half of what I had sold it for, or bought it for even. And uh, so 
I got excited and I drove it to my house and I showed it to my wife and said, look, here it is. We can have this again. And uh, she wouldn't have it. <laughs> she was, yeah, just wouldn't have it. So uh, that was really hard. Took it back to him, lost my other opportunity and it changed hands again. And so now it went to some other person and we would see it around town every once in a while. And my brother would see it and take pictures of it. And I'll show you some of those pictures too. And my brother was real good about finding it. He'd almost go treasure hunting for it. And bless his heart, he actually tried to buy it back. Uh, what you'll see here, and I'll talk about later, is a dent near the gas door. And we actually identified the car by that quite often. We said, is that it? And we'd look for the dent. So we'll talk about that later. But anyway, we'd see it around town at Walmart, you know. But uh, anyway, it changed hands again, and it ended, it ended up over at the college. And so my brother said, hey, I saw this over at the college. It's there every Wednesday. So he'd see it as he's driving around with his friend, and then he'd tell me where it is, and I'd... I actually went and saw it here. So I ran over there, saw it sitting there. By now I had my Mach 1 and my Cobra, but I left a note on, on it anyway just saying, hey, uh, if you ever want to sell this or if you even need help fixing it, you know, let me know. And I did notice it was starting to lose some paint around the spoiler and, you know, the back bumper was scrapped up a little bit, but nothing too bad. And of course, the person probably thought I was a creeper and never responded. So um, then I'm driving around and, you know, near one of the townhomes we used to live in on a Sunday. And because uh, my wife and I are just reminiscing where we used to live and all that. And there it is. Still looked pretty decent. Of course, those wheels don't have the right offset. But overall, it looked okay. I found it again. So we took a few pictures of it. And uh, it was parked up on an, another kind of an incline hill where they just did a whole bunch of uh, construction. So uh, now I knew where it was again. And um, one night I'm sitting there. We're about to uh, lay down to go to sleep. And my wife's on Facebook and she says, hey, look at this. And she shows me a video. Okay. Just had a little flash flood happen here in St. George. And it is just floating down the water. This is and so as you can see in that video i freaked out i said there it is and it's it's getting washed away in a flood so of course i'm paying attention to is is the mud going up over the hood it looks like it's just kind of going up into the wheel wells a little bit uh, i didn't know how bad the storm was going to get that night but you could tell that was the wrong place for this to be parked. And I'm like, why aren't they moving this car around the corner? You know, and I didn't sleep a wink that whole night. And so I couldn't sleep that night. I was just thinking about it and thinking, should I go over and talk to these people and creep them out? And, you know, just, yeah, I don't know if they would want to sell it now or, if we, or what the deal is. They obviously didn't respond to my other message or, you know, anything like that. So uh, the next day was Sunday, I woke up drove over there and saw that the car was still there. So it looked like it had weathered it pretty good. There were some tumbleweeds stuck under it and some mud and everything, but it didn't look like it had been submerged or anything, you know, that bad. And I thought, okay, at least it's, you know, it looks like it survived. Uh, so then uh, I kept an eye on it and it was gone one day, then back the next, gone again. Okay, so I thought, well, it still drives and it's still their car. Obviously, I'm, I don't want to knock on their door and creep them out that I'm stalking them or that I found their car, you know, that kind of thing. So then out of nowhere, I get a text message from a friend of mine and it's a screenshot of a truck driver who's his friend and, and this, is, uh, this is the screenshot that I got. So as you can see, it said, you know, this car, what a shame, it runs and drives and it's going to a salvage auction. And I'm just like, a salvage auction? Oh, I should have gone over there and talked to them about it. Maybe I could have bought it from them. And uh, I wasn't sure maybe if it wasn't too late. So I called the tow truck driver and, and he said, yeah, yeah, I got it on the uh, truck right now. And I'm like, just take it to my house, do something. Like, I want this car back. And uh, so he said, let me make a few phone calls. 
So it felt like an eternity. And about an hour later, he called back and said, nope, sorry, this one has to go to the auction. It's a done deal, everybody's been paid, and so it's going to the auction. But here's the PO number, and uh, you know, here's the place that it's actually going. So uh, I called them and I said, hey, what's the deal? Uh, there's a car showing up today, and they kind of laughed at me. Yeah, it's gonna take a while because the car has to get here, then we have to get the title. And by the way, you can't bid on it unless you have a dealer license. You don't have a dealer license, do you? And I was like, no, I don't. And so they said, yep, you can't even bid on it. And then once you do have a dealer license, uh, you have to um, pay $200 to you know, be part of our, our system. So I jumped on the Facebook page for Las Vegas Mustangs and said, you know, hey, here's my story. This is what's happening. And a uh, really nice guy, uh, Enrique, messaged me and said, hey, give me a PM. And so I started talking with him and he said, yeah, I'm familiar with that place and I've actually bought cars there. So I, I think I can help you out. So that's kind of where it was sitting. Uh, I pulled up that PO number and it kept saying not found, not found. And I was like, I hope, you know, they didn't just sell it to pick a part or something and I'll find out it's gone. And so finally it showed up and it said, you know, um, image not available yet, but it's in their system. Then I waited a little longer, a little longer, and it's finally posted up and, and with pictures. And so here's a few of those pictures. So I'm looking it over and I'm seeing the writing on the windows and you know I'm looking at the car in general because I haven't really seen it since uh, the time it was towed. I don't really see a water line going down the side. It looks like it's going to be in pretty good shape. So on a way that's bad because people might bid on it for parts uh, thinking it's good. And uh, here's an interior shot. I can't see the carpet but it doesn't seem like it would be that bad. Uh, the gauge cluster doesn't show any mileage which is what this picture really typically shows so I'm a little worried that but I'm thinking hey maybe it won't start because it was running at the time it was towed but maybe I can get it started and maybe I can get it for a better deal. But that's its condition. And so, um, anyway, now I'm kind of in limbo because we're at that point where I have to watch it because this auction, sometimes they allow you to buy the cars uh, ahead of time uh, without even bidding on them. They'll just put it up for sale. So I'm watching it to make sure it doesn't just show up for sale and I miss my opportunity. And uh, if, it has, if it comes down to it, I'll have to, you know, to bid on it. So anyway, that's where it is now. I'm still kind of freaking out because, you know, this car, I only owned it probably for half of a year. But the amount of work I put into it and that time of my life where I was trying to figure out what causes a misfire because it had a bad coil, you know, all these things made it, you know, my car. And I've had just as much work and effort into these two cars, which is why, you know, I never want to let them go. But uh, a few backstories here, I'll tell you about that car. You know, as I was driving it up the hill, it would, you know, hesitate and misfire. And so I looked it all up and uh, found out it's probably a coil pack and I changed every one of them out except for the one under the intake. And I had given up by that point because I had relied on this car every day to get me to work. So I dropped it off at Ford thinking, okay, you know, they, I'm gonna let them figure it out and diagnose it, you know, the professionals and uh, same professionals who double gasketed the intake manifold. But uh, anyway, uh, they called back and said, sorry, can't find anything and that'll be uh, $95. And I was like, I'm not paying you a dime until you tell me what's wrong with it. I paid for a diagnostic check, you know. And, and so it almost hurts me to think what they did to that car because then they called back and said, okay, we did find, I said, check the, check the coil packs because I bet you it's, it's a coil pack. And so then they called back and said, yeah, and we got it to misfire. And I'm just thinking, oh, what did they do to that car to make that happen? <laughs> you know, and so... Um, anyway, also it came with uh, the stock wheels, uh, kind of the starfish type uh, wheels. Which this is a picture of it uh, over at the college. I, I really enjoyed driving this car to college and back. But anyway, yeah, the wheels, I really like these style wheels as I've said before, but I really wanted bullets. And I really liked them. I, I actually didn't mind them at all. Uh, but they, what I really liked on that body style were bullet wheels. And uh, so then my sister ends up getting a V6 Mustang that had bullet wheels on it. And so uh, I swapped it out with her 
actually I gave her a pair of V6 wheels that we had and uh, put those bullets on my on my GT and I really enjoyed the way it looked that way. And keep in mind, this is how these cars looked on the factory lot as my brother and I would go to the Ford dealership and drool over them. And that darker look with the chrome lip and us having a lot of connections with a bullet, which is another story, but it looked really good this way. Uh, then when it came time to sell it, we negotiated with my neighbor who bought the car and I put the stock wheels back on it. And when we went in, uh, one of the lug nuts was cross-threaded and I said, uh, and they said, we're going to have to break this to get it off. And so I let them do that and they broke it. And then I took it over to discount tire and they just said, sorry, there's nothing we can do. And I said, yes, there is something you can do because I know you touched it last. And I told you specifically, don't put the lug nut in the gun and drive it onto the lug nuts. And sure enough, that had happened because these kids were working there. And so I said, I'm bringing you the bill for the new lug nut stud. And I did, and they actually paid it. So sometimes you have to be a little forceful, unfortunately. But uh, anyway, that's the story where it is now. And of course, I'm, I'm completely nervous. Uh, in the pictures, it does not show that the car is running. It shows the, uh, you know, the, the mileage, and it's blank. And something that will happen with flood cars uh, is they will run right afterwards and then about a week later they won't because uh, a lot of the electrical connections that get wet eventually start to corrode and you know maybe you could take it apart and clean it maybe it damaged the computer I don't know but all I know is it was running and driving when it was towed away so maybe some of that will work for an advantage towards me if it's posted as non-running and you know it's a flood car maybe people won't want to touch it except for people who you know like pick a part that might be good still selling body panels uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that i can get it back for a decent deal pull the carpet probably uh, put new carpet in it in the picture the seats look okay but you don't really see too low in it uh, so i don't know how bad it really is uh, but I, but one funny thing about the side of it is, is that that car always had a dent right over the fuel door and I was embarrassed about that when I owned the car. You know, you always think everybody's going to look exactly where the car has a flaw. And uh, funny enough now, though, that has been the trademark to that car. Every time we've looked and seen a white GT, I said, is that, is that our old, my old one? And we'd look for the fuel door to be dented. So I think I will always keep that dent in the door if I'm able to get this car back. And uh, if I get the car and it's a complete loss, then I'd like to coyote swap it. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, you can do anything with the shell of a car. It's not wrecked. And, you know, I think the rest of it can be put to use. Where will I come up with that kind of money or be willing to spend that kind of money? I don't know. But anyway, that, this is where the story ends for now. I'll keep you posted with other videos and everything. And so... I uh, appreciate you watching and let me know in the comments if you have similar stories about cars, you know, the one that got away or the one you're trying to get back or the one you hunted down because it, it just happens a lot with cars. So anyway, that's my story and uh, I'll let you know what happens from here. Thanks for watching.